Hey, welcome to Tighten Up Today. It's your boy CD back again with another episode. Today, I'll update you on Thursday's practice and injury report, but today's not just any day. It's Fantasy Friday. And on Fantasy Friday, this segment, what I'll bring to you is pickups and drops, starts and sit a little bit of buy low, sell high, and IDP projections, but only for Titans players, specialty, of course. That being said, no need to delay. Let's get down to it. Welcome back. So for Thursday's practice and injury report, Delaney Walker and Kevin Pamphile practice in full, no issues, and have been removed from the injury report. That's great news. Now on the other side, Cameron Wake, Sharif Finch, and Chris Milton did not practice and remain questionable. We'll see how that works out. We still got a couple more days left to determine that. Now for fantasy football, first things first, pickups. I'm going to keep it simple here. Anybody can tell you to pick up Derrick Henry. Obviously, we know that. What we'll do is anybody who's 20%, I'm sorry, 50% owned or less in Yahoo Leagues, I'll suggest them. On the drops, it'll be anybody who's 70% or more owned in Yahoo Leagues, I'll say that you should cut them and we'll go from there. So, first player, A.J. Brown. Only owning 20% of leagues right now for whatever reason. Have no clue. I would say... I won't say no clue. He has been a little inconsistent over the over the year, but the biggest thing that you have to notice is he's, he's a rookie. So rookies naturally takes him a little bit of time to get, especially at wide receiver. They say it usually takes about three years, but for him, he's already caught on a little bit, and you see that his production is starting to increase as more his snap counts are starting to increase, which is extremely important. I have a formula that I use. Um, it's called snap count equals targets, which equals yardage and receptions and equals more touchdowns which equal more points it's simple man you can look it up in science that being said pick up aj brown and put him on your roster next Corey davis both wide receivers for whatever reason are not being held Corey davis on the other hand he's 44 percent owned in yahoo which is better than i guess half the league but or more than half the league but I can see why. His inconsistent play, not play, I'm sorry, his inconsistent stat line seems to be the reason why people tend to shy away from him. I will say this, once we get this offensive passing game rolling with Arthur Smith and we really start to gel, when that train starts rolling, it's going to be unstoppable one. But the second thing is the number one benefactor of that train will be Corey Davis. Right now he leads our team in wide receiver targets and I don't think that's going to stop at all unless he gets hurt knock on wood anyways next up Marcus Mariota by far needs to be on a roster don't know why but 14% only 14% are rostering Marcus Mariota now our play he's getting sacked you don't get negative points for being sacked his play the yardage aren't isn't there the, the touchdowns aren't where you want him to be on that level sure but he's 15th in the league for uh, for Yahoo points. Like So why not have him on your team? Yet a 10-man league, that means there's 20 quarterbacks realistically should be rostered. If it's a 12-man league, we're talking about 24 quarterbacks. If he's 15th, he should definitely be there as a bye week filler. Worst case scenario, um, me personally, I have him on all my leagues. It's probably easier to pick him up too, that being said. But whenever he doesn't get the points in the air, he tends to, one, not fumble and not intercept or not throw interceptions, which will help out by not giving you negative negative points. But he runs. So when he runs the ball right now, he's got 170 plus yards rushing on the season. So when he's running the ball, that'll give you a couple points here, a couple points there where he's missing in the yardage. So take that flyer and roll with Marcus Mariota, seriously. Now, who do I start against Denver? Number one is number 22. Derrick Henry is going to run the ball this game now we talked about it in previous videos his yards per carry average is not that great at 4.0 right now but but he's going against this denver front seven who's giving up 4.7 yards per carry to runners this is the time to feed this monster and we see him 
get the yards that he's supposed to be getting 150 maybe more we'll see how that shakes out but definitely start him and on, other, on the other side you have if we're on the goal line he's getting the ball at least two times um before we start to throw the ball so you can maybe even see a touchdown come out of him the other player that i really really like this week is delaney walker why delaney walker has been inconsistent as well and i don't know okay delaney walker after the Jacksonville Jaguars loss, had a little bit of a mini locker room rant, um, which he spoke about how there's a lot of young kids on the team that he really feels like you can't talk to him the same way that he was talked to back in the day in the locker room. It's just a little bit different. People are real sensitive, blah, blah, blah. The next week was against Atlanta, and the offense looked like a totally different team. I think after his little bit of a frustration rant again this week at the locker room, I believe his frustration in his role leads to Arthur Smith saying, oh, yeah, we do have that tight end that he's pretty good, Delaney Walker. And I believe that Marcus Mariota feeds this man, feeds him a ton. Um, I don't think there's going to be a ton of yardage all the way around. I don't think there's going to be a ton of touchdowns or a ton of scoring at all. But Delaney Walker, whenever he leaves the field, will be able to say, hey, look, I got my opportunities to do something with the ball. And then if we win or lose, he can't say anything. Just trust that. Now, who do we sit? Anybody really in the passing game, to be honest with you. Marcus Mariota has to take a seat. Corey Davis has to take a seat. A.J. Brown has to take a seat. I would say Humphreys as well has to take a seat. All these guys outside of Delaney Walker has to take a seat because that pass rush that they have, which has not done much on paper, Bradley Chubb and Von Miller on the edges. We don't want to just drop back 30 times and, and throw the ball. Don't want to chance that. You got cornerbacks, the safety, they got a good secondary. They're built to stop the pass. Our run game, on the other hand, should be easy to kind of get through here. So I think that we push it all on the run game, which requires us to not pass so sit those guys Mariota, Corey Davis as well as AJ Brown just have a seat this week there'll be more more games in the future so moving on IDP individual players what they call it, individual defensive players I'm sorry for those new to fantasy football Jayon Brown put him on your team for sure start him every single week he's already coming into his own like I said in the past he is good. He is really good. Right now, he's got 36 tackles on the season, which equates to a good chunk of tackles per game. The sacks aren't there. Not seeing interceptions. So, like, that's a little bit off, but he's going to get volume tackles for you, which should give you a couple points. That being said, too, you got Rashawn Evans that's right behind him, only one tackle behind him. But between the two of them, they have one and a half sacks. I think Dean Pease's is, is defense is built for those middle linebackers to kind of Stop the run and stay and hug the middle of the field as he's using everybody else to blitz. If it's the, the outside linebackers, ends, or if it's a cornerback um, or safety as well. But another IDP to consider, Kevin Byard, naturally. So right now, Kevin Byard's got 26 tackles, two interceptions on the season, solid numbers. You can trust that he's going to do continue to do that and grow as, he's, um, as, we, as we approach the end of the season. But the number one Tennessee Titan IDP to pick up and play, probably one of the tops in the league right now, is Logan Ryan. Quietly doing his job, as always. He's got 30 tackles, two picks, and two and a half sacks. Again, Dean P is bringing them from all angles. Trust that he will have a great game this day, as well as a great season. That concludes this episode. Join me tomorrow as I predict the scores of the remaining 13 games this week and give you a detailed player projection of the Titans players, what I believe they'll do against the Denver Broncos on Sunday. Lastly, for tomorrow, you'll get the bold prediction. You'll want to see that. If you like, love, and want more of Tennessee Titan Up, like that button down there. Or well, I guess don't like the button. You can like it if you want to, but click the button down there, subscribe. Click that bell over here in the bottom right-hand corner. Get yourself a notification for tomorrow's episode. And before you leave, I got a question for you. Why tighten up tomorrow when you could tighten up today? <laughs>